It's uh, Friday, which is always good. It's the 4th of September. I'm Matthew Wright, and you are watching The Right Stuff, the TV show that shocked the Daily Mail by getting Tory MP Ed Vasey to take Herbal Viagra live on air. <laughs> now, remember that? Well, did you read about the latest treat for chaps with um, soft centres? It's Viagra <laughs> ice cream, and guess what? We're going to try it right here, live on Five! <laughs> it costs... It costs just eleven ninety nine a tub. They're going to sell it to, in Selfridges, by the way. The question that you're all asking, well, at least some of the guys in the audience are asking, and at home is, does it work? Well, let's get the panel to help us find out. First up, a man used to eating weird stuff. It's Cooking in the Danger Zone star, Stephen Gates. <laughs> Take it away. OK. I believe uh, you can get it absinthe flavoured or regular, and we're not sure which, which this is. It's kind of non-specific vanilla. I've had uh, I've had other aphrodisiacs like uh, yak's penis and uh, uh, lamb's testicles and Did stuff like that. Did they do anything for you at all? Uh, no. <laughs> no. But then I was on my own. I was in. I was filming. I was away in China. Um, well, the, but... her the herbal Viagra one. Uh, I can remember Ed and I sort of saying, "Oh, nothing's happening." You know, as the show going on, we're doing sort of Viagra. Watch anything happening down your end, Ed? No, no, no. <laughs> By the time I got home, I have to confess, it was a slightly different story. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's all, about, it's all about changing your mindset. And uh, anyway. Indeed. <laughs> and next to Stefan, Carol Thatcher, ladies and gentlemen. When you were in the jungle, did you have to eat nasty stuff in the jungle or did you escape yeah, those challenges? Yeah, she's a kangaroo ball. I, I don't know what the kangaroo thought. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, her herbal Viagra flavoured ice cream, is that what, for you? Is you it unisex? Do you I think? believe so, yeah. <laughs> Can't hurt, can it? <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a warning sound from the audience? <laughs> well, not these three are going to have it. Oh, yeah, they're too right. I'm going to eat the whole lot. <laughs> I, I'm, it's the weekend, for heaven's sake. <laughs> hmm. Not my normal breakfast recipe no, 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 or no, menu, no. but never mind. Well, uh, Carol tucks into that. Let's meet our special guest for the morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kenny Logan. <laughs> Welcome back, sir. got a special treat just for you. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say... It's working it's already. Working. <laughs> <laughs> I just, can I just get into this right You may, you may, you may indeed. It's a long weekend. Let me just... I'm going to go... I, I can remember my old ice cream man. He used to be... <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're a bit, bit, bit plastic there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keeps falling down, that one. You right, it's nice, that. You better have a refund. It's like a little yeah. message for Jeremy Kyle, that one, if you're going to interpret it this way. <laughs> uh, now, uh, as a rugby star, of course, Kenny earned a 70 well-deserved caps for Scotland, three Premiership titles, two English Cups with the Wasps, and then two years ago, he swapped studded boots for patent shoes and took on his wife, Gabby, in Strictly Come Dancing. And now... You've got your autobiography out. It's called uh, Just for Kicks, and it's, I guess it's roughly divided into two-thirds rugby, one-third strictly. Yeah, there's a, there's a fair journey. There's obviously a journey of my dyslexia and stuff like that, and childhood, losing my dad and my cousin, and then, you know, the stri Strictly, but there's a lot of good rugby stuff in it. The, so indeed. it takes a lot of boxing. I'm just, I'm just wondering whether, um, consciously or subconsciously, that would be how you would say e the importance of each... One relative to the other, that, that, that rugby was two thirds of the importance mm. of your career and, and maybe strictly one third? Yeah, I think there's, there's certainly journeys you go through in life. And I think rug, I mean, rugby was a great for me, that's where I, my name was, was born. And then obviously, when I finished playing rugby, I, didn't, I never expected to go into strictly nowhere. You know, I, didn't, I couldn't even dance. <laughs> Mind you, people say that at the end of the show. <laughs> um, but you know, I didn't even want to do it. So the strictly chapter was brilliant and a great, you know, great journey for me because you know, I think that. When you do something you're not good at and then you get better and then you start getting a bit of confidence. And it was just fantastic, brilliant, good now, show. You mentioned uh, dyslexia and what I found intriguing is, is how your dyslexia led to you... Well, you admit in the book that you were a bit of a bully at school and we were talking about this yesterday. We couldn't think of any other celebrity who's ever actually uh, had the uh, cojones to stand up and say, you know, yeah, I was a bit of a bully. It's normally, oh, I was picked on, I had a terrible yeah, well, time. Yeah, what, what actually happened to me was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was a bully, I, I remember one stage at my primary school, you know, because you couldn't read and write, you couldn't, you know, people could see that at primary school. So the kids were going thick, stupid, thick, stupid. And the guy who was doing it to me was the school, so I hit him. And that was the only time I hit him at school. So I became, because I put him on his backside, it was like, oh, like that. So that's what made, I wasn't the, the bully, but then when I went to high school, his brothers and cousins chased me the first day, I was running down the high street and I ran into this 
old lady's house going, nah, 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 let me in, let me in. And she's like, who's that guy? And uh, it wasn't even, you know. I wasn't even in that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I was just trying to get in somebody's house, because then I, these 20 guys, these 10 guys gave me a bit of a kick in and said, you ever, and that was it. So I never ever was a bully, but I knocked out the school bully. OK. So that's where that which is, came Which from. is, I, I have to say, if you can do it, it's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, but I suppose I went through my whole school life and thick, you were told you're thick, stupid, and, you know, you get to stage that you, you take it into your own hands, which that's what I did. And then I realised after it, I didn't like that place, because I did it once and everyone <gasps> like that. And then your respect changes at school, because everybody, everybody thought, oh, you better watch what you're yeah. saying to him now. And which you was actually... on a farm as well, didn't you? Was that, yeah. Is that sort of good training for a rugby player or for dancing? Or... It wasn't for dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what was good for dancing. Uh, no, good for rugby, because you, you started lifting things really early and, you know, lifting bales and watching your dad, you know. I think I've had a sore back from the age of nine till now for lifting all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must have had some other sore bits on the Strickling tour. And what about the Apwe dancing there? A bit yeah. wild, was it? Yeah, it was a wee bit wild, yeah. <laughs> it was a great story about Arlene, uh, Arlene in a funnel. Yeah, and, well, and that's, yeah, again, we, we, had the, we did the, the Strictly tour, which we did 46 shows. I think we averaged something like eight, 9,000 every night. It was amazing. And uh, the end with the rap party, so we had this Grey Goose vodka, which I talked about in the book, and everybody had to take, you know, the little funnels out the, out the bottles and pour the vodka. So we all had to have a mouthful, and Arlene says, Kenny, I think I'll have some. And everyone was like, come on, Arlene, come on, Arlene. <laughs> <laughs> And she had it to the vodka. Brilliant. Poured down her throat. <laughs> like a true star. Uh, now, she's so, not old. She's now, I was going to say, so what, what's your take on her being pushed off the judges' panel? Then? I think, you know, they, they had to make a change, because I think they had to make a change. You know, there was a lot of thing of last year that was yeah. getting a bit dull, so sadly, something was going to ha have to um, fall, and she's the one that's fallen. I'm bringing um, Alicia in. I think she'll be brilliant, because yeah. she, she's really funny, she's a really good girl, she's great on the show, and she'll add a bit... There'll be a different side to... To okay, the show, that's I think. Very and fair. there was a couple of hard people on it with Craig and Bruno and, and Len. So it's again a different okay. entertainment. Uh, uh, that, 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 that's pretty fair. Um, one last uh, thing I've got to put to you is uh, the, the mix up when uh, you met your missus, uh, Gabby Logan, and you muddled her up with somebody else. Is that right? Yeah, I, I was within this, in this bar and I go through to see the boys and I said, Listen, guys, you won't believe it. There's Gabby Roslin's through next door. I think she quite likes me. <laughs> and they're all going, right, let's get through. They go all go through. Their heads pop around the corner and went, it's Gabby Logan, you idiot. I went, like, yeah, that's not Gabby or anything. I went, yeah, that's her. So that was the first self. Yeah. So I was in love with two good women at the start. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that was very funny. Oh, and listen, then, it's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, my, my flakes keep... Let... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's working or not. We'll give you a full report anyway on Viagra ice cream as we work our way through uh, this morning's show.